Downfall of Silicon Valley Bank Silicon Valley Bank SVB, was once the go-to bank for startups and tech companies in Silicon Valley. It was founded in 1983, at a time when the tech industry was just beginning to take off. SVB offered specialized financial services to startups, including loans, cash management, and foreign exchange. Its success was closely tied to the growth of the tech industry, which it served with diligence and expertise. However, in recent years, SVB's reputation has been tarnished by several high-profile scandals and missteps, leading to its downfall. This video will examine the factors that contributed to SVB's downfall and discuss the lessons that can be learned from its experience. Rise of Silicon Valley Bank SVB was founded in 1983 by Bill Biggerstaff and Ken Wilcox, two bankers who saw an opportunity to serve the needs of the emerging tech industry. At the time, Silicon Valley was a hotbed of innovation, with companies like Apple, Intel, and Hewlett-Packard leading the charge. However, traditional banks were hesitant to lend to tech startups, which they viewed as risky and unproven. Biggerstaff and Wilcox saw an opportunity to fill this gap in the market, and SVB was born. SVB's business model was simple but effective. It offered specialized financial services to startups, including loans, cash management, and foreign exchange. It also provided advice and mentorship to entrepreneurs, helping them navigate the complex world of finance. SVB's success was closely tied to the growth of the tech industry, which it served with diligence and expertise. Over the years, SVB became the go-to bank for startups and tech companies in Silicon Valley, and its reputation grew along with the tech industry. The Downfall of Silicon Valley Bank Despite its early success, SVB's reputation began to falter in recent years. There were several factors that contributed to its downfall, including Exposure to troubled startups One of the factors that contributed to SVB's downfall was its exposure to troubled startups. SVB was one of Theranos' main financial backers, and as a result, suffered significant financial losses when the company's fraudulent practices were exposed. Theranos was a healthcare startup that claimed to have developed a revolutionary blood testing technology. However, it was later revealed that the technology didn't work, and the company was engaging in fraudulent practices to deceive investors and customers. SVB was one of the investors that lost money when the company's fraud was exposed. Involvement in the WeWork debacle Another factor that contributed to SVB's downfall was its involvement in the WeWork debacle. SVB was one of WeWork's primary lenders, and when the company's valuation plummeted, SVB's exposure to WeWork's debt became a major liability. WeWork was a co-working startup that was once valued at $47 billion. However, when the company attempted to go public in 2019, its valuation plummeted, and the IPO was eventually cancelled. SVB was one of the lenders that was left holding the bag when WeWork's fortunes turned sour. Aggressive and risky lending practices SVB's lending practices were also criticized for being overly aggressive and risky. SVB had a reputation for lending money to startups that had yet to turn a profit, and as a result, had a high number of loans in default. This was a reflection of the startup culture in Silicon Valley, where companies often prioritize growth over profitability. However, it also exposed SVB to significant financial risk as many of its loans were to companies that were not yet proven or profitable. Out-of-touch management Another factor that contributed to SVB's downfall was its management, which was criticized for being out of touch with the changing landscape of the tech industry. SVB's management was made up of seasoned bankers who had been with the company for years, but who may not have had the expertise or experience to navigate the fast-paced and ever-changing tech industry. This led to a disconnect between SVB's management and its clients, who were looking for a more innovative and agile approach to banking. Lessons Learned The downfall of SVB offers several important lessons for other banks and financial institutions. Firstly, it highlights the risks associated with exposure to troubled startups. Banks and investors should conduct thorough due diligence before investing in startups, and be aware of the potential risks associated with investing in unproven or untested companies. Secondly, the WeWork debacle demonstrates the dangers of overexposure to a single borrower. 
banks and lenders should diversify their portfolios and not rely too heavily on a single borrower or sector. Thirdly, SVB's aggressive and risky lending practices should serve as a cautionary tale for other banks and lenders. While lending to startups can be lucrative, it can also be risky, and lenders should be mindful of the potential risks associated with lending to companies that are not yet profitable or proven. Finally, the importance of staying abreast of industry trends and being adaptable cannot be overstated. Banks and financial institutions need to be able to evolve with the changing needs of their clients, and not get left behind as the industry changes and evolves. Conclusion Silicon Valley Bank was once the go-to bank for startups and tech companies in Silicon Valley. However, in recent years, its reputation has been tarnished by several high-profile scandals and missteps, leading to its downfall. The factors that contributed to SVB's downfall include exposure to troubled startups, involvement in the WeWork debacle, aggressive and risky lending practices, and out-of-touch management. The lessons learned from SVB's downfall include the importance of due diligence, diversification, caution when lending to startups, and staying abreast of industry trends. While SVB's downfall is a cautionary tale, it also offers valuable lessons for banks and financial institutions looking to serve the needs of the tech industry.